Welcome to Antioch Bible Study. The name derived from Acts chapter 11 verses 25 to 26 where the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. But then the reason why that was necessary to raise men and women who were like Christ was because our Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, to follow all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then from Romans chapter 8, verse 29, for whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, nobody has a right to define what Christianity should be. Christianity is modeled after the life of the man who started it, after the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let us bow our heads to pray. Lord Jesus, may your Holy Spirit conform us to your image. As we study your word, transform us into your image that we may live your life here on earth. Thank you for hearing us. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we, we are studying um, the, the teachings of Jesus. That's why we are calling this series Making Disciples the Jesus Way. The Jesus Way. He, the way he taught his disciples to produce those 11 men who, after he left the earth, changed the world. We want to enter into the same teachings so that we too can change our world the way they did. Turn it the right way up because it was upside down. So come with me to Matthew 5.14. Jesus said, you, talking to the disciples, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, the moment we begin to look at this scripture, we see immediately the elevation. Jesus was elevating his followers to be the same thing he was when he was here. The elevation comes from John chapter 1, verse 4. The Bible says, in Jesus, our Lord, was life, and the life was the light of men. And that life that was light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not resist it, could not extinguish it. In other words, the light of Jesus overcame every darkness. You know, the um, physicists, they tell us that there is, that darkness is actually not an entity. <laughs> that darkness is merely the absence of light. In other words, the moment light is extinguished, darkness comes. And we know from experience that whether you are able 
to drive away darkness fully will depend on the intensity of your light. You come into a place like this and you just have one candle light. Yes, there will be light, but there will still be a lot of darkness. There will still be a lot of darkness. So, the greater the intensity of your light, the greater the power to overcome darkness. And so, anywhere we come and it appears that darkness is overtaking the light, overcoming the light, then the solution is simple. The intensity of light must go up. The intensity of light must go up. So you come to a place when the darkness of sin and corruption and evil is very high, overcoming all the light. Then the intensity of the light there must go up to overcome the darkness. Because the Bible says that Jesus brought such a piercing, incandescent light with such power that it overcame every darkness. Every darkness. And so, Jesus says, our Lord Jesus said to his followers, you are the light of the world. Now, this is how he elevated them. I want you to listen to him in John chapter 8, verse 12. Our Lord Jesus said, spoke to them again, saying, I am, was telling the, his, his audience, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of of life. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. The darkness of sin and evil. If you and I follow the Lord Jesus Christ the way we should, we will never be found in the darkness of evil and sin and wickedness and corruption. We will not be seen. This is what the gospel is about. And then the elevation also is seen in John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now you can understand then why Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world because I'm not going to be here forever. I will soon be gone and you will replace me as the light of the world. You will replace me as the light of the world. Now, light is created to shine in darkness. What does that mean? If, you, if, if this was broad daylight and you switched on the light outside, nobody will notice. Nobody will, it's like street lights. If you don't switch them off during the day, nobody will notice. But the moment darkness comes, ah, everybody sees the street lights because with their limited illumination, they keep darkness at bay to some degree. And Jesus said to his disciples, you do not light a lamp and then you put it under a basket, under a basin, under a, 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 a cloth to cover it. No. You light a lamp and you select a strategic position and you put it there so that all the influence of the light will reach as far as possible. And so Jesus, our Lord, is saying to you and I, as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, everywhere you go, I want to strategically locate you so that you will be the light there dispelling every darkness. And the darkness does not overcome his light. Now, the early disciples, they understood this. They understood this. So that's why anywhere there was darkness, they will mm -hmm. rose up to resist it. You know, a church history tells us that when the emperor declared himself God, the worship of the emperor. Oh, yes, the Christian said, absolutely trash. There is no way, you know, such idolatry will be permitted in the church. And of course, they had suffered persecution, and they didn't care that they suffered persecution. 
But they said that is darkness. That is darkness. It must not be allowed to stand. Of course, of course they prevailed in the end. They prevailed in the end. So it's important for you and I to understand this call to be light. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. It is a crooked and perverse generation that you and I live in. And we are called to go into it. Not that the darkness will overcome our light, but our light will overcome the darkness. This is the challenge of our calling. Jesus said, you are the, we are not just come, uh, called to, to, to maintain some fancy religious ritual and then, and, and then walk away feeling satisfied. And then darkness is, is swarming all around. No, this is, this is not our calling. Jesus said, we are called to be the light of the world in, a mist, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Where there is immorality, where there is uh, wickedness, where there is injustice, where there is insensitivity, where there is evil, where there is corruption, we go there and shine the light to dispel this darkness. Now, when you think about light and darkness, you think about constant confrontation. And that, and that, is, and that is the nature of it. The moment you stand up with light blazing, darkness will scurry away. But you know, in reality, it, it begins to fight. It begins to fight and raise opposition. But the Bible says that the kind of light our Lord Jesus Christ brought, the one that used good to overcome evil, the one that used kindness to overcome wickedness, you see, it is the kind of light that darkness could not resist. And that's why, you see, even at the cross, even at the cross, when he was being nailed at the cross, he had the nobility, he had the grace, he had the quality of character to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's how darkness, of, uh, light overcomes darkness. So, in the face of wickedness, in the face of injustice, in the face of evil, even though Pilate tried several times to release him and they refused, he still had the grace, he still had the inner nobility to say, Father, forgive them, or they don't know what they're doing. This is, this is the light that Jesus wants us to take into a world of crooked and perverse generations. Now, but the Apostle Paul also reminds us of something that is very, very important for you and I. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, it said, For you were once darkness. It is good to remember that as a Christian, you were once darkness, you were, you were once part of the evil. So, how can people who were once darkness, now turn around and become darkness again. Oh, no, no, no. That is not possible. This is not the, the, the calling, our calling in Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 8, for you were once darkness. There was a time in your life, there was a time in my life where we were darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk at work in your workplace. Walk there as children of light, as a child of light. At home, 
Be a child of light in the street, in your business. Be a child of light. Say no to evil. This is our calling. You see, our calling is not to have fancy rituals in church. Our calling is to be light in a world of darkness. That's what Jesus came here to teach. It's not about religion. It's not about liturgy. Fancy liturgy. It's not even about fancy sermons. It's about character transformation. That's our calling. Change your ways. Not be a part of fraud and wickedness and all kinds of evil. No. Absolutely no. That's not our calling in Christ. He said, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Okay? It's in all righteousness. And it's in truth. The fruit of the Spirit. You see, the, the Spirit of God dwelling in us is supposed to shine this light to overcome darkness. And say no. Say no. See, where do you find the courage to say no to that man? I say, I don't have courage, but the Holy Spirit speaks inside me. He speaks through me. I don't have boldness. See, I'm using the boldness of the Holy Spirit, give, a boldness of Christ given to me by the Holy Spirit. Yes. You see, we are supposed to show that there is a power. Jesus didn't come here to, uh, our Lord Jesus didn't come here to introduce religion. He came here to give us a way of life that is empowered. You see, he didn't say go and, go and produce your own battery to be shining as light in the world. You don't have any. I don't have any. But the Holy Spirit that he sent to reside in us is the power pack that shines the light. And that's why, you know, I tell people that sometimes you may be so afraid of our consequences. You may be afraid of, uh, of uh, results of your opposition to, to darkness. But the Spirit of God keeps telling you, you don't have a choice. You just have to speak up. You just have to stand up. You just have to say no. You just have to. And, and, and he, keeps, he keeps urging you. And then even though you may be afraid, but because he's back of you there, you say, absolutely not. You know, and they're like, where, where does he find the boldness to say that? Where does he find the courage? He, don't, I, he doesn't have any. No, not at all. But the spirit, the spirit is the one saying, absolutely not. And he's obeying the spirit in his life. And this, this is the challenge. You know, let us, not, let us not bury ourselves in rituals. Even, even, even good works, you know, is not a substitute for for righteousness at all. It's not a substitute. Kindness, charity, it's not a substitute for righteousness. No. Because we can, we can do evil and, and then use the proceeds of evil to come and be doing good. Is that the what? No, that's not what we are called to do. You know, you first do evil and then you use the proceeds of the evil to come and do good. Absolutely not. You know, this is not our calling in Christ. He said, you were once darkness. But now, you are children of light. Walk as children of light daily. And how we do that is, is in verse 10. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord always. And that's what I say to believers. I said, you don't have wisdom. You, you, are using, you and I are using the wisdom of God. We don't have uh, patience. We're using the patience of Christ. We don't have courage. We're using the boldness and, uh, of Christ and the courage of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Depend on him. That's why he's here. Depend on him. Every time you are challenged, depend on the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus sent him to live in us. Nobody has any special ability. Nobody has any special strength to resist evil and temptation. But the Holy Spirit gives the strength to those who ask him. Understand this. This is the way it works. Don't think that the people that are saying no are better than you. They are not. They are using the power of the Holy Spirit that is available to all of us to be able to say no to what is wrong. And then the Bible says that you are, because we are light, we have a, a, a duty in verse 11. He said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them to find a Christian 
amongst those conspiring to loot, to cheat, to embezzle, that's a tragedy. To find a Christian amongst those conspiring to, 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 to rape, to commit immoral, immorality, that, that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. He said, have no fellowship. Don't have any association at all with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather, anywhere you see that such a thing is happening, expose it. Expose it. Verse 12 says, It is shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Oh, yes. You know, they, they hide. You see, the, the tragedy of ignorance is that people hide to sin as if God needs physical light to see evil. You know, it doesn't matter where you hide. I've, I've told people how, what the Bible reveals that God uses to know everything happening in the life of a man. What does he use? The spirit he has put in you. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27, that the spirit in man is the candle of the Lord. It is searching all the inward parts, what you are thinking, what you are planning, where you are going, what you are doing. Everything is recorded by the spirit in you. And you cannot say, I don't want this spirit in me. Because the moment that spirit leaves you, you are dead. You are dead. So you cannot do without the spirit in you. And that spirit in you is monitoring everything for God. And that's why the Bible says, expose, expose them. It's a shameful thing to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. He said, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Absolutely. Whatever exposes evil is light. Therefore, he says, await you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Yes, Christians mustn't be asleep. So asleep that darkness has totally overtaken their lives, overtaken their testimony, overtaken everything. You see a man that used to be vibrant, as a Christian, he's a great witness for Christ. And then suddenly, you see him years later. Oh, it's a totally different story. That's a tragedy. That is a tragedy. That is a tragedy. And that's why in this season, we must remember, you see, these are seasons that remind us that life is very transient. You know? And if you die in iniquity, it's in iniquity you will perish. Don't listen to preachers who tell you that once you have gone to the altar and, and, and say you surrendered your life to Christ, oh yes, you, you, you'll get to heaven, nobody can stop you. Say, so, really? <laughs> Go and read um, um, Revelation chapter 3 verse 6. It said, he that overcomes, I will not blot out their name from the book of life. What does that say to you? It said to you, you and I, that they blot names out. They do blot names out. You have to overcome for your name not to be blotted out. So to come to the altar, kneel down, say a few prayers, somebody lays hands on you, and then you go home and say, I'll go to heaven so I can do as I like now. Oh, think again. Think, there is no such thing. So let anybody not deceive you. Okay? So the Bible says, it is a shame when you hear some of the things that are doing in secret. And you and I must not be found in that congregation on, or people among people who do that. So we have a challenge as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said you are the light. He didn't say you will be. He said you are the light of the world. It's a responsibility. It's a challenge. I must be light. I cannot be found in a cahoot with evil. I cannot be found compromising, working together with darkness. What type of light is that? that is comfortable in darkness, that is cooperating with darkness. That is no light at all. That's why Jesus said, when the light that is in you is darkness, then your darkness is worse. Because some people, other, the other people may have darkness, a product of ignorance, but you are having darkness when you are supposed to know the truth. I want us to go to those golden verses in John chapter 3 that started with verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the next verse says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, might be saved. Now, the next verse says, He who believes in him, okay, is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19 says, And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness because, rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. That is it. That's why people don't like the light. They don't like the truth. They don't like justice. They don't like equity. They don't like righteousness. They don't like integrity. Because their deeds are evil. And so when you and I go and join them, then we betray our calling in Christ. We betray our calling in Christ. We are called to be light. A light that is put on a pedestal, on an elevation, so that wherever you are, you have influence. And the more the intensity of your light and my light, the wider our reach, the wider our influence, the more people's lives we touch and bring them out of darkness into the light of Christ. So that when life is over, they will end up in eternity as children of light. You see, it's, it's not about attending church here. It's so important for you and I to, 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 to understand that. It is not about attending church. It is about being light that overcomes darkness. Being light that overcomes darkness. I want you to bow your head because this is so critical. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, you are the light of the world. And each and every one of us needs to ask ourselves, am I light where I am? In my home, am I light? At work, am I light? In the community, am I light? I am called. I have a calling upon my life. And what is that calling? You have the same calling upon your life. And what is that calling? To be the light of the world. Oh, ask the Holy Spirit to empower you today. Because every light must have power behind it. All the light you see, there must be power. Electricity power of some sort. Whether it's battery or electricity or generator. There must be power. The same thing during the day there is light. is the sun that is powering it. Everywhere there is light, there must be power. And when Jesus said you are the light of the world, he sent the Holy Spirit to empower it. And so I want you to bow your head and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you to power my light. Please, darkness is overcoming me at work. Darkness is overcoming me in the club. Darkness is overcoming me on the road. Everywhere darkness is overcoming me. I am tired of being overcome by darkness. Empower my light so that I can shine everywhere I am and show people with gladness, with joy, the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bow your head. Talk to him from the depths of your heart. He wants to empower you. The Holy Spirit, he wants to empower you to shine in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. He wants you to shine. Right now, right now. Things may be difficult, he still wants you to shine. Yes. Things may be challenging, but he still wants you to shine. Because a, someone, the sun cannot but shine. Yes, once, once the day breaks, the sun has to come out and shine. The darkness cannot withstand it. There must be daylight. This is the kind of light that Jesus wants, our Lord Jesus wants you and I to be. Constant, consistent light in a world of darkness. Father, 
May your spirit empower each one of us so that we can be light in a world of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And Lord, as many as desire to be light who are still in darkness, my brother, my sister, you are still in darkness, but you want to be light. Just pray and say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. From henceforth, I will no longer be darkness. I want to be light in the world. Come into my life. Bring your light into my life so that my life will be filled with light. And then I will become the light of the world which you called me. From this day, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. I will serve you. I will follow you. I will love you. I will obey you. I will be light everywhere I am just so that the world will see your light and give you glory. I thank you, O oh God. And Lord, as many as are repenting today, particularly those who are sincere in their sorrow, Father, please comfort them and bring them into your family and cause them to be light in a world of darkness. Yes, I see those faces now. You know, Jesus is saying to you, yes, you will be my light in your world. I will shine through you to the glory of my name, to the glory of the Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.